Wow, this is high tech, isn't it? Every year our City Channel crew just gets more creative. Welcome everybody, I am Don Brown, <laughs> City Manager. Welcome to this year's Crest Awards. This is a special evening, uh, my favorite event of the year. It's the time when we honor people who have, as the award says, Cupertino recognizes extra steps taken. That's what Crest stands for. I want to acknowledge some people that helped put this event on tonight, and they're hardworking people. The person who's most responsible is Donna Cray, our public information officer, and she is standing right over there by the door. <clears throat> and uh, assisting her ably is the person who does uh, all the backup work for me, the council, and Donna, my secretary, Linda Lagergren. Linda is right there. And special acknowledgement for our City Channel crew. The only one out here visible is Ray Delgado, but in the back room are Kellen Yamada and Pete. Um, Pete. <laughs> and uh, also, I'd like to acknowledge our volunteer from the Access Channel today. So thanks for their, all their work, and you're going to see the product of their work in the videos today. Pete Calganese. I'm sorry, Pete. Um, Again, it's my honor to welcome you to this very special evening program. Uh, and it, what, this, what this event says is that a community is more than the sum of its parts. And as you're going to see tonight, uh, the recipients have had an impact on a lot of people's lives, way beyond the direct impact that they made when they decided to volunteer and participate in the community. So we really appreciate that. It's a huge, uh, this community is just amazing in terms of the number of people that get involved and step up to the plate and deliver. So thank you for all of that. There's a few things I want to point out before we get the program underway. The first thing is that we have some ways of recognizing people. And one of those is a perpetual plaque, which is right in the center of the table which hangs right here in the Quinlan Center lobby. And that plaque stays there forever. And uh, we put a new one up as we add people to it. So that's one way that we recognize people. The other way is that they personally get to take home our Crest Award, Jade Crystal, which recognizes them with their name engraved and the recognition of the Crest Award. So that's something they take home. We also have some acknowledgments from other important people, including uh, some proclamations from Assemblyman Jim Kinneen. And we have uh, from the federal government, and you know when the federal government's involved, it's something good to help you, right? So we have, <laughs> we have, cert we have actual proclamations from Washington, D.C., from Anna Eshoo, and they're in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> And was there another one, Donna? Byron Scher, also Assemblyman Byron Scher. So uh, those will be keepsakes for people to take home and display and put on their wall. Um, I have a couple of instructions for the recipients tonight. You'll notice on my left two X's on the floor. And your instructions are to stand on those X's because this is being filmed for later rebroadcasting on our city channel and uh, also copies will be available to the recipients. So we want to make sure you're right at the right spot and we get your smiling face in there. Uh, this will be uh, broadcast uh, on May 19th at 8 p.m. and on May 24th at 5.30 p.m. and then it'll be shown repeatedly throughout the year at various times. Okay, it's now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you your mayor, Wally Dean, for the first award. Welcome, welcome. Tonight's a special night. Uh, it's the opportunity that the five council members have to say thank you. We come up and all year long, we're thinking about programs, we're trying to come up with ideas, but you know what? It won't work unless you get involved. And tonight typifies the key people in our community that we want to say thank you to that took the step forward, 
took the step forward and got involved for the city of Cupertino. And with that, I'd like to introduce our first presenter, Mr. Don Burnett. Thank you, Wally. Uh, our first award winners this evening are a couple, Phil and Francis Bush, and we have a video that'll tell you a little bit about what they've done for the community. The best way to keep alive the history of people and places is to pass it along from generation to generation. Phil and Francis Bush, careful guardians of Cupertino's history, share the city's legacy willingly and passionately. We try to encourage the children to take the interest that, they've, that we have sparked with them, take it home and talk to their parents about their own heritage, whatever that is. Quiz the parents, quiz the grandparents, and find out where they came from. We think it's very important you know, the past helps you with the future, you know, how things have changed over the years. And it's rapidly changing now over more than it used to be. The Cupertino Historical Society and Museum is located within the Quinlan Community Center. For the past eight years, the Bushes have been docents there. They now have the major responsibility for the museum's popular educational outreach project known to hundreds of school children as the Traveling Trunk. The Traveling Trunk was um, organized, we think, about 20 years ago, and various uh, volunteers have been taking it to third grade classrooms and other uh, organizations, old and young, in the community. Uh, many people have been head of the Traveling Trunk in turn, and it certainly has been our joy to join this uh, team effort with Mrs. Marcotte to go out to the schools and meet with the children and watch the sparkle in their eyes and the amazement that not everything is plugged into electricity as they think of their lives now. And a viewfinder to look at this We have an old box camera that they really picture, like to see that it. coffee grinder and uh, where you boiled your coffee in a coffee pot and the old camera and um, what else do we have? I think uh, some clothing that is different. And then we have uh, my lunch box that I had when I was in the first, second, and third grade in Stockton. So that they eyes pop when they see that. <laughs> Since the couple's involvement three years ago, the project has grown from eight participating schools to 18. The Bushes agree that the Traveling Trunk program is a natural for them. They're both former teachers in the Cupertino Union School District, so they enjoy talking to young students about a subject they themselves find fascinating. We were both brought up in historically interested families in Stockton, three generations back. And so it has been part of our whole personal heritage coming out of that kind of background. And uh, then as careers were terminated and retirement years now, uh, we are just kind of tuned in, I guess you'd say, to uh, this whole historical feeling in this community. Luckily, we had parents who were pack rats and saved everything, so we have a lot of the things that went back to our grandmothers and great-grandmothers families. Phil and Francis support the Cupertino Historical Society in a number of ways. Each donates about 100 hours annually as gallery docents. And many more hours are spent with fundraisers, social events, clerical tasks, and community projects. But their history of volunteerism stretches back to the year they arrived in Cupertino, 1951. Well, we came here in 1951, came up from Bakersfield where we had been teaching for three years. And I started at Lincoln School when there were only six classrooms. Worked with the PTA board at Lincoln. I was Cub Master for two years for the PTA. We, did, uh, we worked with charter members of the West Valley Presbyterian Church. So we spent many, many hours and uh, many, many committees for that. Then for the fun time, I joined the Foothill Men's Garden Club and I've been a president for over 10 years <laughs> Even in conversations about other volunteer activities, the Bushes managed to bring in their love of history. 
They're both presently historians of their church, and Francis has been active since 1954 in the historically significant Cupertino di Oro Club. For the Bushes, it all comes back to local history and their love of it. Well, we don't consider we enjoy it very. Mm -hmm. We enjoy it very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil and Francis Bush. <laughs> X marks the spot. Phil and Francis have been serving the community a long time, as you can tell, starting in 1951. Uh, their first home was a tank house. They had no telephone and they had no car when they came to Cupertino. Uh, when Mr. Bush taught first at Lincoln School, the uh, principal's office was in the janitor's closet. So education has moved along a little bit since that time. <laughs> uh, the brooch that uh, Mrs. Bush is wearing has a very interesting history. Uh, it uh, was given by her great grandfather to her great-grandmother back in Sacramento in 1861. It's a beautiful piece of work and it's something nice to have something uh, cherished from that long ago in the past. Much of their work has been with children in the elementary schools and it's always kind of fun to get the children's response. And I have a letter here that was written by one of the children after watching the Traveling Trunk exhibition. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bush, thank you for coming to show us the antiques. I liked the lanterns and the corks, which were very big. I enjoyed all the school antiques, especially the Bank of America Boog Banks, the Eversharp pencil and the ink pen. It must have been hard to walk for the women with all those skirts. <laughs> it must have been easier to churn butter than it is to shake it by hand like part of the class did. Sincerely, Diane Dana. So, uh, we have a bunch of other letters here, and the children apparently enjoy this very much. So uh, with that, uh, I'll present you with your awards. We have them right here. I think I'll best put this back in the box, make it a little easier. They're not neat, but uh, doing the trick. And certificates. And there you are. Get to carry a load there is kind Very of good. Good. Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to introduce my colleague to introduce to uh, present the next awards, Mr. John Statton. Without strong schools in our community, we'd be a very weak place indeed. And the next two gentlemen that we'll be introducing tonight have really contributed quite a lot to helping us have very strong schools and a very prosperous educational system in our town. Between the two of them, they've been well over responsible for raising well over $150,000. And that's through their work on the behalf of the organization well, well known among us as CEEF, Cupertino Education Endowment Fund. These two gentlemen have gone over and above on behalf of CEEF, and we owe them a great debt of thanks as a community, and we're here tonight to help honor them. It's my pleasure to be the one to introduce Mike Masananga and Andy Chung, and we'd like to then have a little bit of a video presentation on some of the work they've done. Chung and Mike Masunaga have hit the equivalent of three back-to-back -back holes in one. One, they've tripled proceeds for the Seif Golf Tournament, a highly competitive event for serious golf fanatics. Two, they attract celebrities and corporate sponsors from all over the Bay Area. And three, well, they uh, get to play golf. It's fun. It's fun for us. I think it's, it's golf, and and if you can play golf organize a good activity 
and still have other people benefit from it, then it's a win-win for everybody. You know, the corporate cup has grown since we've been involved. I mean, we go through a lot of trouble, and, and the other chairs have gone through a lot of trouble to organize it and, and uh, make sure everybody does have a good time. We come from different, really very different work environments, but it's the common, the same cause, where Mike owns his own business, and I work for a large company, HP, and I think what we bring, different than perhaps what someone from the school district would bring, is those business contacts. The Cupertino Educational Endowment Fund, known as CEF, has distributed over $3.1 million to support educational programs. The golf tournament alone has yielded over $232,000 on behalf of the district math program. For the past three years, it has grown to a full field of nearly 150 participants here at the Santa Clara Golf Course. The nice thing is there's a lot of work, but, but there's also the freedom to be creative. I'm also interested to make sure I bring value back to the participants. So we, we've added things, we added celebrity people, we've added uh, um, uh, prizes, uh, hole-in-one prizes and the like, uh, putting contests and things, and I, I think that people enjoy that. Mike and Andy are accomplished business leaders who share more than their love of golf. Both are active, supportive parents who really get involved in their children's activities. Mike and his wife Nancy have a daughter in the Cupertino School District. Andy and his wife Linda have three daughters in the school district. They also live just a stone's throw away from each other in the same neighborhood. That's how they met, and that's how they convinced each other to support CEF and its projects. We're just, ne just neighbors, like you saw we're, you know, at our home. Uh, we, we moved to a new complex, and so when you move in a new complex, you get to know the neighbors. And, uh, and we had our daughters are the same age, and uh, actually, I only have one daughter, but they're the same age. And we both golf. I think that was a combination of things. Th that, that got us to the second conversation. The first conversation was high. <laughs> <laughs> so golf is definitely the tie, and the yeah. kids, yeah. <laughs> Together with other dedicated supporters, Mike and Andy also work on the CEF Gala, another exceptional fundraiser which is held in May. Their winning combination has brought forth a number of exciting, innovative ideas for both the gala and the golf tournament. It's a commitment, but it's not a sacrifice. And anything that we can add to that just makes things easier for them to do their job. Mike and Andy, could we have you join us, please, up here? Good evening. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that, um, that both of them will take just won't mind me taking an additional minute here to plug a certain event that's happening this Saturday night that I think they're also both very active in supporting. In addition to the work, as we noted in the video, both gentlemen are also valuable members of the gala committee and have contributed literally hundreds of hours towards making that event quite the success that it is today. This year, Mike's leading an effort to expand and improve the casino game procedures, which hopefully is not going to get him in hot water with the law, but I think will be very valuable for the, for the event itself. And Andy's developing a new mini event for this year's gala. It's a professional wine tasting and blind judging of premium boutique wines. So these are both going to be very popular gentlemen come Saturday night, and also very hardworking, obviously. On behalf of the community, I just wanted to express our thanks for the both of you going over and above, not only taking time out of your busy lives, but both professional lives and family lives to do the work you do, but just in general to help our schools the way you both have. So thank you very much again. And on behalf of a very grateful community, <laughs> oh, if I saw your putting on there, I think you're going to have many, many good things ahead. So, thank you, thank you both thank very you. much again. I'm rushing off too fast. Now it is my great honor to introduce my fellow colleague, Michael Chang, for the next award.
good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my high honor to uh, give an award, present an award to a tireless and talented uh, volunteer in our community, Roberta Holloman. Let's watch a video. I'm a musician, and, um, and music and the arts have always been very important in my life. Maybe it's Roberta Holloman's musical background that helps her orchestrate a meeting so successfully. For the past 25 years, she has listened to a chorus of different voices, hearing each one individually and finding ways to create harmony among them. Okay, Diane has something. She's a founding member of the Cupertino Fine Arts Commission and a career volunteer with the League of Women Voters. Currently, she serves as chairperson of the Five Cs, a multicultural volunteer group interested in opening channels of communication within the city's diverse population. I know that they are all interested in making Cupertino uh, a good place to live, so that, that is key. We have so many different ethnic groups in Cupertino. Um, we have uh, representatives from the Iranian community, the Russian community, um, of course, several Asian communities, not just one Asian community, but quite a few. Um, and so that's been interesting to me to learn about the different cultures. With Roberta at the helm, Five Seas has tackled sensitive issues head on and invited the community to find solutions through public forums. What did you learn about community safety? People always like the good old days, even though maybe they weren't so, so good. But they do like to, to think of things the way they were. Change is always um, uh, threatening. You know, it, it can be, for some people, change is good. They really like change. It, brings excitement to their lives, but for many, many people, change can be threatening. People aren't always going to agree, but it always helps to be able to talk to one another and um, learn other people's opinions rather than just talking over the back fence. And that pretty much sums up Roberta's philosophy and why she's so well known as both a skilled mediator and facilitator. She believes that folks are better off when they communicate and share their opinions in spite of dissenting issues. With the League of Women Voters, an organization that she's been involved with since 1973, she promotes a very modern form of communication to reach today's busy computer literate voters. It's a pet project of hers called Smart Voter. Smart Voter is a, an internet um, project. It's a website with election in information. The League of Women Voters is um, an organization that provides nonpartisan information to citizens to help them make up their minds on how they're going to vote. And this is just one more way that we can bring this information to the voters. There's a feedback place on the website and we um, the last election we had over 600 comments unsolicited comments coming back everything from um, this is the best thing since chocolate cake almost <laughs> to um, well I wouldn't vote for that candidate because he didn't put his information up on the website if a candidate doesn't think enough of me to give me some information I won't vote for him so yeah, those are the kinds of comments Whether she's dealing with voter apathy or volatile ethnic issues, Roberta strikes just the right note. She approaches everything with calm efficiency, an open mind, and the dedication of a seasoned maestro. Roberta Holloman, would you join me? <laughs> Roberta, let me go ahead and say a few nice things about you, which will not be very hard. Uh, having served with Roberta on the same 5C committee, uh, I could just attest to both two things. Uh, her smartness and her talent in bringing the group together through many, many events. 
uh, town hall meetings where hundreds of people participate, a retreat that goes on for two days, and uh, group meetings where different groups of people, kinds of people would come and join. And helping to make this program, I think, a model uh, for the whole valley in terms of how to bring communities together. And for that, thank you so much, Roberta. I also want to say that um, Roberta's talent that was mentioned in the video about music extends throughout her whole family. Uh, she has a mother that's a musician, a singer, in fact. Her husband, her two daughters are all musicians, and Roberta herself plays the piano. And I would be remiss if I do not mention the long service that she has given in our community in many, many different aspects. For instance, uh, she's just on our uh, teen task force right now. But I think one of the longest service has to be with the League of Women Voters. Uh, she has been serving on that since 1973 and has held many important uh, positions in there, including uh, chair of the county council for the League of Women Voters in Santa Clara County, president of the League of Women Voters of Cupertino Sunnyvale, and budget committee chair of the League of Women Voters of California. Uh, what the video did not mention was that for her work and the League of Women Voters work in the Smart Voter uh, project, she, the, the League has won a very prestigious award uh, from all the way from Sweden, and Roberta will be representing the League to go there to uh, re receive that award. So for all your work, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely want to thank you, Roberta, on behalf of all the citizens in Cupertino. I'd like to um, reintroduce our mayor, Wally Dean. Thank you. Um, this category is young girls, and I get five of them. This is exciting. Um, this is the Senior Center Case Management Volunteers. I have Marla, Marlis Ryan, Opal Lemmer, Cynthia Schultz, Laura Wolfhorst, and Marion Burgess, and we'll key in with the video. Jackie, the social worker. How are you doing? Five dedicated women, known as the oh, case oh, management sorry. volunteers, help to keep frail homebound seniors sure. safe and in touch with their community. Yeah. Maybe you ought to have Max do the answering, huh? Yeah. Case management volunteers offer an invaluable combination of professional training, knowledge, and experience. They really pay attention to the needs of each client. Clients love the volunteers because it's people contact. The goal of the case management program is to prevent or delay institutionalization for as long as possible. It's, it's, a, it's very satisfying because you know that Jackie is really working so hard to keep these people home where they're more comfortable and offering you know, the services that we have. And uh, it, it's a very satisfying job. I've been doing this for 12 years now. <laughs> and I think just uh, knowing that someone cares. They, uh, Jackie usually has a list of some of their needs and she might, might, want, me, might want me to inquire about them, but um, I may be the only human voice they hear all week. For a homebound person, it's those phone calls, visits, and shopping excursions that brighten lonely days. I think first you have to be interested in the, the life that, that the elderly people are, uh, are living at the time because they all come from different areas and uh, have different likes and dislikes and to um, appreciate uh, what it is that they, that they uh, give them a choice in doing whatever it is that they want to do because that's very important to keep their self, themselves alive. Other clients may need something quite different 
like well-researched, thorough advice on housing alternatives. More often, I start with um, options that are available and places to search and appropriate agencies to contact. And often, probably as much as 50% of the people that I see are perhaps family members looking for placement for a relative, either someone who's living with them or someone who's coming to the area to be closer so that they can manage their care. And they will often say that the, the most that they have gained from our conversation is just knowing where to begin. Still other clients may be looking for information about caregivers who have been carefully screened and interviewed by the volunteers. And uh, this in no way relieves the people who need caregivers from doing checks and interviews and making sure that it's a good match, but it does give them some place to start so, it, so they aren't so bewildered. With only one desk among them in a closet-sized office, the volunteers work in shifts and don't often see each other. One of the, the frustrations of being a case management volunteer is you don't get that kind of peer reinforcement. For one thing, the work is confidential, so you can't talk about what you do, except in maybe the very vaguest terms. And you don't have the camaraderie of the office. But being a case management volunteer does have its rewards. Yeah, I come here on, th on Tuesday, I help Jackie. On Thursday, I'm a desk volunteer. And it sounds corny, but it's the highlight of my week. I really enjoy talking to people and showing them our facility when I'm a desk volunteer and explaining the fantastic program we have here. Like I said, I am a physical therapist and worked clinically in the, in the hospitals up until about three years ago. And so the thought to be able to continue giving back to the community in some way is probably the thing that I think of most and that I can use this technical information that I have and, and um, help seniors to either manage better in their homes, manage better in a more appropriate environment, and provide little tidbits of information that just makes their life easier. Ladies. Now, there were five involved, and I think we scared two off. It's not very bad, though. Busy ladies. Very busy lady. That's very good. Let me start off with uh, Marlis Ryan. Um, when Marlis retired, her goal was to go to lunch and shop. That was it. Very simple. She just celebrated her 50th wedding anniversary and is one of the bridge regulars at the senior, se senior center. She loves to trade jokes and loves to travel. She's the longest serving case management volunteer at the Senior Center. Cheerful greetings, careful listenings, and wants to know about family, pet, and health is her credo. She's also a volunteer at O'Connor Hospital in Information Services. Marvelous, congratulations. Uh, Opal. <laughs> Opal Lemmer, she is not here tonight. Is she here? She's not here tonight? She's not hiding out there? Okay. Uh, she is the newest case management volunteer. What her job is, is she interviews pot potential workers with the seniors, takes their pictures, and turns them into caregivers. Uh, she loves gardening, and she takes her gardening talents to her recipients in the field. She's also a master gardener. Cynthia Schultz. Um, she is at a party in Reno tonight, so she couldn't make it. There are priorities in life. Uh, <clears throat> she doesn't like the shop, but she loves to travel. She's the jack of all trades, a very active computer person, and a card player. She has a very open sense of humor. Every Thursday, she sings to the volunteers at the center, and she is the original desk volunteer and Jewish mother. If anything has to be done in a hurry, it's Cynthia's the one to do it. 
Okay, Laura Wolfhorse. Diverse person. Other than the senior center, she's also at Pleasant View Convalescent Hospital as a volunteer. She's in charge of the monthly birthday party and the monthly mass. And in the picture, you saw Tessie the dog. That's the white poodle, just like mine. Good dog. Uh, she's another card player and also a golfer. She's a friendly visitor to isolated clients. She shops, she visits, and helps with life's decisions with the people she helps. Her presence, her sensitivity, and common sense give this certain lady a vision that someone can trust, and she loves to travel. Finally, and this one, this one was a, this one was a biggie, because I had this whole thing set up that we were going to surprise her, and uh, it didn't happen. So we're just going to have to go with what we've got. It's a computer groupie. Da, da, da. She has a major sense of humor. She's also a physical therapist at Skills Plus. She also comes from the Council on Aging as a paraprofessional. Para she's a housing specialist for the housing opportunities for seniors. And she's for friendly visitors program visits by phone or in person to residents that need help. And she becomes an interactive family member for them in need. Now what I was gonna do, she's also in the senior band. And I was trying to solicit a saxophone <laughs> that I was gonna pick up and hand to her and ask her to play it. Unfortunately, the owner of the saxophone saved you. Thank you. <laughs> I won't go into it, but with that, I congratulate all of you. Let me give you your words. Uh, this is one that should be displayed in your office. If you could give these to the two people that didn't make it, and one from California. Thank you. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to introduce the young, vivacious Sandra James. I am absolutely delighted and honored to present the next recipient, someone I've worked with for many years and greatly respect, as you will after you hear about her, Deputy Janet Shannon. Let's listen. Spend just a day with Janet Shannon and you'll find yourself saying, how the heck does she do it? At any given hour, you'll find her drawing out the best of every young person she meets. Junior high and high school is very hard because, you know, kids feel like they don't belong, they don't fit in. But what you need to do is show them that there is value, that they do offer things to the school and to the community that other kids don't. And um, to try to draw them in, to recognize their own abilities. A deputy in the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department, she serves as a school resource officer in Cupertino's junior high and high schools. For Janet, in her job, there's no such thing as an eight-hour workday, because there's no such thing as an eight-hour kid. A typical day for us is when you come to work, you look at the little flashing light on your phone and you've got, you know, seven, ten messages or whatever, answering phone calls. Sometimes that means making contact with parents out in, at their home or their place of business, uh, meeting kids at school. So just kind of being there to listen to what's going on and then finding the right resource that can help them. She's always available to parents who are worried about their children and to PTA groups who value her experience and knowledge. Janet's there for the kids as well, often on her own time. Um, sometimes it gets over a little bit much when you've got a lot of late nights, but you know, it's also the fun programs that, um, that, that show you that this job really is worthwhile and working with some wonderful, wonderful kids, it's, it's a pleasure really to do that. Okay, once again, we want to remind you of confidentiality. This is very important. She's particularly enthusiastic about Youth Court, a program she helped design in which young people participate in a peer court as prosecutors, defense attorneys, and jury members deliberating on actual cases from the juvenile probation office. It's a wonderful process because we find that 
some of the kids who go through the process as suspects that have gotten into trouble, maybe made some bad choices, um, get so involved in the process that now they want to be trained as, as attorneys. And our juries are really, um, it's not the good kids judging the bad kids because one of the, the sentences, if you will, is that they serve on two juries. So we've got a really mixture of kids that get together and try to come up with good consequences. Another pet project of Janet's is called Teen Academy. It's an 11-week program designed to give students a taste of what law enforcement is all about. It's a program not so much to make officers out of kids, but it's anybody who's interested in law enforcement and what we do. Um, to be honest with you, some of the kids in the class that we choose have no desire to go into law enforcement, but they're real curious about what we do and why we do it. Much of Janet's work with Cupertino students is designed to humanize the positions of uniformed officers on campuses and in neighborhoods. A lot of the kids recognize that we're there not only to do, you know, the arrests, but also as a resource to them. So when we go on campus, we're approached a lot of times by the kids saying, oh, can I ask you this? Or, you know, what would you do in this case? So yeah, I think we've, we've made a big impact in the years that we've had it in Cupertino. I've noticed a big change in the kids and their willingness to come up and talk to us. Janet's volunteer efforts don't stop in the schools she regularly visits. She recently teamed up with other officers and Special Olympics athletes waiting tables for a benefit called Tippecop. She also volunteers in her children's schools, participates in a literacy program, and in special holiday events for needy children. Deputy Shannon truly cares for the young people of this community. Her actions speak volumes. Her words underline her commitment. Kids are are called upon to do things that we were never called upon to do, to compete like we were never called upon to compete with others. So there's a lot of stress at the schools. Um, and I, you know, I think kids need help dealing with that. Deputy Janet Shannon, would you please come forward? I have known Deputy Shannon for many years, many more than I probably care to mention. She is a unique individual who is a member of many communities that intertwine in our city. She's a member of a very special group the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department. Um, and in that group, she certainly represents them extremely well, participates in many activities separate from those of the school resource officer. The officer in crisis program fills in for her fellow deputies, is trusted and honored by them. Also, she's part of the school community, and this city is a very, very much based on the philosophy of education in schools. I've seen Janet on her knees wiping a tear from a young child's eyes. I've also seen her nose to nose with a young adolescent male uh, who was irate about an insult another adolescent male made to his girlfriend, and Janet vehemently trying to uh, explained to him that the next time that happened he should call her and let her take care of it and that was a more successful way to do it than for him to get in trouble also. Um, she is a very good role model to all of us. She's um, a young woman in a career that many people, many women especially, don't, didn't consider a possibility for them. She does it extremely well. She role models for students and the rest of us throughout this community in ways that it's astounding to watch. Conflict resolution is something that Janet, I think, um, is an expert at. She understands the young people in this community under a lot of stress. She's a mother of two young uh, boys, not so young, excuse me, I shouldn't even say that. She's a mother of two male becoming adults, uh, sixth grader and eighth grader, I believe, is that right? Um, and she understands from a parent's point of view, from an educator's point of view, from law enforcement's point of view, and the student's point of view. And it's the unique blend of all of those things that I believe enables Janet to do the outstanding job as a school resource officer she does. Our school resource officers are there to role model, to be proactive, 
to help us lead children through all the little traumas and the big traumas of life to be successful in their chosen endeavors. And Janet allows them to do that. She doesn't dictate, she guides, she role models, and she cares. And above all the rest is the biggest heart, the gentlest nature, and the firmest guidance I have ever seen. We are very, very lucky to have you, Janet. We can't clone you, but we can honor you. Congratulations. I'm very lucky because I get to do two of these and I know both of the recipients extremely well. The second recipient I am pleased to honor is someone I've known for many years in the schools, Joyce Yee. And let's listen about her. Great A's for her contributions to the students, parents, and faculty of Monta Vista High School. Clearly, she is devoted to building a strong school environment with a real sense of community. Well, this past year I took on the position of co-president at Monta Vista, and, um, and I knew it would be a, a, a big commitment, so I quit my job and I concentrated on, on the high school, and my daughter Janice is a senior. So I knew it was very important for her and for me to get really involved with the, the school. With the largest student enrollment in the Fremont Union High School District, coordinating events like Career Day for Monta Vista's 2,100 students is no small feat. Joyce firmly believes that every volunteer effort, no matter how small, is important. If you can only help for one day, for example, Career Day, a lot of our working parents took the day off just to help on career day. So you don't have to be involved in, and be at school every week to be an active participant. And she gets high marks from school administrators who say she has a special knack for recruiting new PTA members and other school volunteers. I think the best way is just a personal approach. And so if people get involved just a little bit initially, then they get more and more involved. And most people are more, very anxious to help. They're just waiting to be asked. In this past year alone, her ability to juggle several projects and to keep up with an active family has certainly been put to the test. Joyce also serves on the Asian American Parents Association, known as APA. This group, thanks in part to members like Joyce, reaches out to many immigrant parents, helping them to adjust to one of the nation's most active educational communities. Um, in a way, my upbringing in Japan helped me to adjust because I was exposed to a lot of different nationalities in Japan. I went to a school where there were children from a lot of European countries, a lot of different Asian countries, Americans. So I was exposed to a lot of different cultures. And I know that it's very difficult for an immigrant to get involved, to feel comfortable in a school. And they have a different mentality about, about participating in the everyday school activities. In Asia, for instance, parents revere teachers but they leave the teaching to the teachers. They don't get actively involved in the PTA. So uh, we have to educate the immigrant population that no, this is a different, there's a difference here. You have to get involved. Um, it's very, it's, it's not, you're not being a troublemaker by calling the school and finding out about teachers and finding out about classes. It's not, you have an obligation to do that. During Monta Vista's campaign to pass Measure H, an effort to bring in $144 million to the high schools, Joyce called on many parents to get involved. She organized phone banks, represented the school at district meetings, composed and sent literature, reported to the staff about measure events, and helped organize a kickoff rally and a celebration dinner. But she didn't stop there. And of course, we won 
so that was that was great and right now I'm on the facilities committee uh, trying to decide how to wisely spend the money and it seems like an awful lot of money but it really isn't when you come down to all the improvements that need to be made. For herself, Joyce sees a double benefit to her volunteer work. I enjoy volunteering because I get to meet a lot of different people that I wouldn't come in contact with and I get to know a little bit more of what my children are involved in. So in some ways it's a very selfish reason for me to, to get involved. But um, I feel that it's, my, it's the easiest way that I know of contributing to something that my children are involved in. And I enjoy it. Come forward, please. She's one of the few people that's actually shorter than I am. <laughs> I've known Joyce forever, I believe. Our children have been in school together when I was on the Cupertino Union School District Board of Education. Uh, Joyce had children in the school district. She helped me with Measure A before she worked on Measure H for the high school. I'd like to think that we did a little bit of training there uh, to help make you successful. Joyce is, a, I think, a fine example of someone who is with you at the inception of a project. She's an idea person who can come up with creative and wonderful ideas, but then she also can follow through to the end. And a good example of that is Measure H, I think, where she was you know, at the very beginning of, of assessing the needs of the high school district, co-chaired the campaign uh, to get Measure H passed, and now sits on the facilities uh, committee to overlook uh, the process and to follow through to the end and sometimes it's very difficult to find someone who could pull all of those things together. In addition to that I think Joyce is a very good role model for those of us struggling in this community to assimilate into a new culture and maintain the dignity and the experience of the culture we brought with us. Sometimes that's a very difficult thing to do probably even not just sometimes but often and Joyce does that with dignity and style and the ability to teach the rest of us a comfortable way to do that. Um, working with her on the Asian American Parents Association and also on PTA is an excellent example of that. So we are honored to honor, her, honor you here tonight, Joyce. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to reintroduce our esteemed mayor, Wally Dean. On behalf of Sandy, John, Don, and Michael, congratulations. We truly appreciate the winner's efforts and everything that was made possible by the, the ideas and the energy levels that you brought to this community. What I'd like to say also is thank you for the supporters to come and help these people celebrate the moment. I think it's awfully important. Uh, before we go to the last collage, the video collage, I would offer this. Please stand and applaud the winners. <laughs> Outstanding job. Outstanding job, you truly helped Cupertino. With that, I'd like to offer a collage of tonight's winners in the videos. And now, here once again are your 1999 Crest recipients. Joyce Yee. I've always encouraged my kids to take advantage of other extracurricular activities. Um, both my kids have been involved in the music program, in the marching band. My daughter's in Ariosis this year, 
And although Monta Vista is a very academic environment, it, there's so much that the school has to offer. So I, I always encourage parents to try to get your children involved in, in at least one activity other than just going to school. I think it makes for a more interesting person. Janet Shannon. One of the ways I work through stress or whatever is to talk about it, so unfortunately my kids and my husband get to listen to me. But it helps me come up with different perspectives and different ideas that might work. The Cupertino Senior Center Case Management Volunteers. Marion Burgess, Opal Lemmer, Marlis Ryan, Cynthia Schultz, and Laura Wolfhorst. And uh, it is very rewarding to see them being able to stay at home and do what they, to, to stay within their home instead of going to an institution. Well, when I have called, just the fact that we call, that we show an interest, sometimes they're just so appreciative, just, I mean, I may call for something very simple, but they're just so happy to hear from someone on the outside because a lot of them are housebound. And uh, this is just an introduction to the outside world. Roberta Holloman. I've been in volatile situations in the past, and um, I feel that, that um, I can bring something to it to um, um, maybe help people see that there are other ways of, of dealing with some of these issues. So I've never been afraid of, of controversy. Andy Chung and Mike Masunaga. The golf community is, is an interesting community. We can talk about a lot, and um, but that brings us together. But certainly, the interests that we have, you know, for the kids. Um, it's different. I might mention that this is there are difficulties organizing this, but again, it's not work. It's it's really challenges, and it's fun to solve the challenges and put together the program. So so we see the end end result, and um, it makes everything worth it, really. Andy and I have a lot of common interests. Um, we, have, we have this, uh, uh, this feeling for, for golf that um, it's like a, I, I, I hate to call it an addiction, but we, we would do a, a lot of things just to go play golf. And so because we have this common interest, uh, it's easy for us to get together and do the different things. Francis and Phil Bush. And we've graduated out of bags and boxes that were the only way of transport uh, to rollabout suitcases. And those have been donated by dedicated uh, people of the museum. And so we are on wheels. I think a lot of it is just their interest in what used to be here, the background of Cupertino, the valley. Oh, they're interested in that, especially those who came in the 60s and 70s. They, don't, they didn't see the orchards and things like we had seen when we were here. And the beautiful display of flowers in the spring, it was just gorgeous, and you'd smell the fragrance from the trees. And in the fall, you had the leaves turning yellow. It was very pretty. Thank you for your outstanding volunteer efforts. With that, I'd like to invite you to the lobby for a reception for our honorees. Thank you.